Hello oh, YouTube, here are 7 tips and tricks on how to build a better chain reaction idea. You heard him, this is Barilla Gossam and Stick Trick Domino Dude, and we're about to make your ideas look more original and creative. So let's start with number one. Begin by brainstorming for your idea. One very important thing to figure out is what objects will you be using in your Rube Goldberg idea. So how do you do that? So first take a look at all the conventional things you have. Dominoes, marbles, ping pong balls, anything you would look at and think, wow, I could easily use that in a Rube Goldberg machine. And if that's not enough, which it shouldn't be, then look at all the things around your house and think, how could I use that in a Rube Goldberg idea? Look at every object that can move. For example, when I looked at a hole puncher, I saw that when I press on it, it makes a lot of potential energy that makes me want to go back up. So I saw that if I used something to stop it and then yanked it out with a string, that it would create a lot of energy. You could make very many ideas out of one object, but they all split into two categories, which leads to number two. Pick the category of the idea that you want to make. The first category is big ideas. Pretty much anything that involves a large object moving is part of this category. If you do it right, it could be surprisingly easy to set off a big idea, especially if you use a rolling heavy weight. Not everything in this type of idea has to be complicated and thought out, but it always looks cool to see something huge fall in a chain reaction. The big ideas most entertain people who have never seen Rube Goldberg machines before. The other category you have is complex ideas. These ideas, on the other hand, are targeted towards people who have seen Rube Goldberg machines before, and sometimes even expert builders. These involve objects moving in a way that you wouldn't think they would, and sometimes many things happening at the same time. Objects being used two, three, or even four times in different ways. Often these ideas involve more conventional objects instead of foreign ones, but they still amaze people a lot. But if you want to start building an idea like that, you first have to learn some basic tricks. Number three, the tricks of cool Rube Goldberg ideas. Starting with the big ideas, pretty much all you need to know is that anything can be triggered by a three pound weight. But the weight's heavy, so how do you set it off? Well, it's actually not that hard. All you need is a domino, two blocks, a binder, a string, and the weight. So what you do is you place the binder on the two blocks, you attach the string to the domino, and then you place the domino between the two flaps of the binder, and then you just yank it out, and the weight falls down. For complex ideas, you need a little bit more tips than that. All complex ideas involve some object being used more than once, and here are a few ways to do that. The easiest thing to do is move a track that a ball rolls on, and you could do that by taping the track to two toy cars, and then placing the toy cars on toy train tracks, and then just pushing it. You could add string and pull it to make it even cooler. Tracks could be taped together to flip and turn each other in different ways. You could use different weights to tip things, but we'll talk about that later. Something that I love using so much is a hairdryer or a fan. And that's because it could move huge objects, but it could be triggered really easily with just a billiard ball. To see a tutorial of how to trigger it, click the screen. Be sure to use foreign objects in your ideas that are not balls, dominoes, or tracks at least once in a while. And finally, adapt ideas from YouTube. There are so many different videos that contain hundreds of Rube Goldberg ideas for you. For example, mine, I have two video series. One is 100 Rube Goldberg ideas, part one and two. So you could just take a look at them right here, and yeah, you can take as many ideas from them as you want. Number four, use gravity to your advantage. In your machine, you have a lot of surfaces to work with. With only a few exceptions, it's best to start your idea off at a high point and end at a low point. Adding a tilting board on top of a table adds an element of creativity to your machine. And sometimes even better, putting a chair on top of your table can make you use height in a very creative way. When a ball transitions from a high point to a low point, be sure to eliminate all possibilities of it bouncing off in a place you don't want it to go. When you're transitioning from a low point to a high point, the domino and string technique would work 90% of the time. Gravity in different surfaces could also work to gain energy and transition into a big idea. And now over to Stick Trick Domino Dude with some more tips. Number five, using different weights and sizes creatively. Different sizes and weights are key factors when building a multi-use element or having multiple balls go on the same track or cardboard or whatever. For example, in Stick Machine 19, in the very first trick, I used a marble and let it go through this tube. And the marble fell through a hole. 
because it was small enough to fit through it. The marble triggered a heavier ball. It triggered the tube to tilt upwards from the back, which triggered the next part. The possibilities for using weights and sizes creatively are endless. Here are a few examples. Coming up with these kinds of ideas are pretty simple. Just take a trick you have in your head and think, okay, what would happen if I used a heavier weight or a lighter weight? Would something different happen? Test it out, experiment, get creative. None of these ideas just pop perfectly in your head. You gotta work for them. Number six, preventing fails. Many, many machine tips videos have told you to deal with fails, that they're a natural part of machines, and they're right, of course, but Still, it kind of created a little bit of an illusion that there is no way to prevent those fails from happening. Well, I can tell you how to prevent fails. While you're building your idea and letting it progress, you have to test it out many, many, many times. If there's ever a fail in it and you see a way to prevent it, then you have to fix it up. Even if that particular fail happens just once and you can prevent it, then yeah, you have to prevent it. Better safe than sorry, even if you think it's just a fluke. I use this tip to a great extent in Stick Machine 19 for this idea. There were so many parts of it that had to be just right. It had to be just perfect. I spent a ton of time on it. I think it might have been an entire day's worth of building just for that idea. Anyone, it was all worth it. You know why? Because during the takes of the machine, that section of the machine worked really, really well most of the time. So yeah, you have to work hard on a particular idea if it's complicated or simple, and you just have to make sure that all possible ways for a machine idea to fail can be fixed. Of course, even if you do this, you will still get a ton of fails, especially if you're using risky ideas. I mean, after all, Stick Machine 19 had over 60 fails. Number 7 themed machines. We've given you good tips on how to make a good chain reaction idea, but now it's time to know how to make a really good themed machine. There are three main steps to make a good themed machine. Number one, in the chain reaction itself, you have to include a couple of elements that are obvious references to whatever the theme is. It has to have a specific use in the chain reaction. It doesn't necessarily have to move, but it has to be an obvious reference to the theme. Number two, the colors you use in that machine have to also be obvious references to the theme. Whether you're using dominoes in the machine, or other blocks, or anything else, that color can be an easy reference. And number three, you have to decorate your machine after it's all done with a bunch of pictures downloaded from the internet, which again are obvious references to the theme. Here's a small demo of a themed machine I did. Let's say I chose Harry Potter. As you can see, I included some of the Harry Potter books in the chain reaction itself. I also used a folder which said Transfiguration Notes as a reference to the Hogwarts school system. And that cardboard tube with some colored cardboard sticking out of it is a reference to a wand. At the end of the machine, the easy task is to catch the snitch, or that yellow ball which represents the snitch. And you can also see I used some decent Harry Potter colors red and yellow, which represent Gryffindor. And as for decorating the machines, all you have to do is look at one of Jack of Balls Phase 98's themed machines, and you're good to go. Just do it to the extent that he does, and you'll be good with decorating for the rest of your life. Okay, now you guys know seven tips and tricks on how to become a better machine builder. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to both of our channels. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Bye, guys!